welcome to the pulpit. Thank you. I've got a question for you. Thank you, thank you. What was the song that you sang, the, the song before the offering? Uh, have Your Way? Huh? Have Your Way? Oh, bef oh The Great Jehovah? Yeah, yeah. Can you, can, you, can you do that for yeah. a quick minute? Was it good? Right. Yeah. The reason why I'm saying that, I want y'all to get ready just to stand up for a quick minute. Because I, there's sometimes when we come to church, we really come to just sit down. <laughs> Keep it real now. Y'all want. What are we doing? That's why some of us don't like going to Catholic churches, because we like, we sitting up, we get down, we get up. It's like, man, I didn't know I was going to do all this calisthenics when I came to church. <laughs> but just for a minute, I want to get into my own little roots here. Yeah. I always say sometimes on some senses, I'm an African born in North America. Yes. And for some reason, this song feels very... It is. African. Yeah. And I just think we should just, you know how laughter allows you to get some stuff out? Crying does too. But can we dance for a quick minute? Yeah. Some of y'all didn't know y'all were coming to get your swerve on. Yeah. But just for a minute, ah, ah. Go in the back. I appreciate it. Great Jehovah, great Jehovah. Hey, love that we Come on, somebody can get on If you got to get in the aisle I for a minute, come release you yourself for just a quick I minute. Think. Hey, great Jehovah, great Jehovah. Come on. Y'all uh, too sophisticated for me. I thought I was coming to the way. Y'all, just for, it's okay. I'm not going to give one of them two TDJs. Just give me 30 seconds of praise. But I think it's okay to release yourself sometimes yeah. and stop trying to look good for everybody else. Because God's been good yeah. to you this year. God's been doing some stuff. He brought you out of some things. So just for a moment, give him some of your time. Give him some of your energy. That, hey, 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 let's say this. I'll say it like this. In the world right now, they usually say, bring that same energy. Bring that energy. Oh, you talk big about God, but bring me some of that energy. Come on now, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay. 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 Okay.
All right. All right. Yes. All right. I just released some endorphins. It just let me know I need to work out a little bit more. I forgot. I should have stretched before I did all that. Now I'm tired. I just want to sit down now. <laughs> it is interesting to be in the building. And yes, I'm trying to catch my breath. It is amazing to me that we have an idea in our head that sometimes is false. We think some of the saints We have an idea that they were, I don't know, I'd even say boring, but they were excited about the fact that they loved God, and some of them just didn't care what it looked like. Oh, come on now. It was them. Pharisees and Sadducees that cared what it looked like. But I know a woman who walked up to him and broke an alabaster box over his feet. She didn't care what it looked like. She wiped his feet with her hair and with tears. I want to tell you, some of what you're going to do in 2020 ain't going to look normal. It's not going to be as precise and sophisticated as you think. It's going to look radical. It's going to look way different. So I bring you greetings. My name is Kirk Davis. How y'all doing? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to walk it out. Think I pulled a hamstring. Nah. <laughs> I think it's incredible because I've known Pastor Mike, and I know I'm giving my age away. I've known him since he was little. And I remember him going to Fellowship Academy. And his mom used to help the kids in violin class. See, I'm from San Francisco. Thank you very much. I'm just, that's where I'm from. That's where I'm from. Represent. Grew up in Patrell Hill. Did most of my work in Hunters Point. My wife is a Fillmore girl. What's up, Fillmore? <laughs> and I'm thankful because there's some stuff that me and my wife been through that I'm glad we made it to 2020. We've been married 34 years. Please don't clap for me, clap for her. See, girl, you, you bad girl. You stay with the, come on, I'm gonna just keep it real. She, we got uh, engaged at 17, 18, excuse me, 19 years old. 
and she saw me at 19 and said, yeah, I want to marry that. I often say, she got to be crazier than me because she saw me. I wouldn't have married me. But I'm thankful. We have three kids. We have a 30-year-old, a 28-year-old, and a 22-year-old. They're amazing. Uh, young people who are working their way into their own particular relationship with God. Amen. And I'm excited about what God is doing in our lives. So let's do this real quick. Let's pray and get into the Word. We had our praise time. We had our cool down time. You gotta have a cool down. <laughs> Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for your word. Your word is life. And I say thank you. Today, as we preach, God, I ask that you would speak through me. Let your words be like seed that falls on good ground. Let that seed germinate and because of the heat of the soil, let it break and sprout forth roots and then yet a stem of a beautiful fragrant flower that you begin to say I, I smell my sons and I smell my daughters and we realize that in the middle, middle of this beautiful word that there will be weeds that will try to choke it out but as a young prophet said that there is a rose that can still grow out of the concrete We thank you, Father, for what you do and what you are doing. We ask that you would be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I realize more than anything in this middle of this Martin Luther King weekend that there are some things that we need to get clear on and be truly aware of. And that is the I Have a Dream speech is probably one of the most iconic speeches uh, ever. And Martin Luther King had different iterations of this very scripture, excuse me, speech, different iterations of the speech, and it was named different things. And I want to tell you one of the names of the speech was normalcy never again. I'm going to say that again. One of the iterations before it was even spoken was normalcy never again. And I don't know about you, but that resonates with me. It resonates with the things that I feel right now. Uh, we are in a time where things are quite crazy. If you look at the headlines between impeachment trials and, and Iran and all the other th stuff, I also realize that there are little black boys and girls being abducted. And it's bothering me and it's shaking me to my core and I don't know what to do with all this information and it could leave you shaken because now I'm telling my daughter please be careful baby you about five foot nothing and people are trying to take you I don't people think people particularly my white brothers and sisters understand what it means to be a parent in this age with children where you afraid for your son if he steps on the wrong shoe Will he come home? There's a lot of that feeling, and part of that is that some of it is we want to have control of the environment in some kind of way. How many people have ever felt just out of control for what's happening right now? Oh, come on, let's just be honest. And I realize in the middle of trying to be in control that I need to let God be in control. Amen. Oh, come on, somebody. I, I would love to think that I'm the... Uh, uh, author of my own destiny, but I had to remember that God is still God. Amen. And he's the author of it all. 
And I need to check in with him and say, God, you are in control. You are still in control. And I have to remember that because I remember my mom saying, no matter what it looks like, Kurt, God is still yet in control. Listen, I would love for you to stand with me for it. Not stand with me, but actually take a look with me to Joshua 1. If you would turn to Joshua 1 with your device or look up here on the board. And we're going to be reading from this this morning. And it's real interesting because I, I, I want to get through some of this because I think it's important to look at this. It says, after the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun. I used to make a joke about that. <laughs> Joshua, son of Nun. How did that happen? What do you mean, Nun? Anyway, <laughs> Moses assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set foot, you will be on the land I have given you. I just want to stop right there because I think it's important to really look at this and begin to start looking at how we begin to look at uh, these transitions in our lives. We have stepped out of uh, 2019 into 2020 into a new transition. I don't know about you, but transitions sometimes are difficult because transition usually means what? Change. That means we're not going to do it the same way we used to do it. We're not going to do it in the way we've done it before. And I understand that sometimes we are creatures of habit and all we want to do is the same thing over and over again. Come on, come on, let's just be honest. Some of us keep going down the same street. We won't even go a different way home. We like consistency. We like having our coffee the same way. We like having a donut the same way. We like bagels the same way. We don't like change that much. And when somebody introduces change, sometimes it's difficult. And we go, I don't know about that. And what I think is interesting in this whole scenario that when change comes and when transitions come, sometimes transition and change, we do something that is difficult with this transition and change. Sometimes you uh, endure some loss in the change and we suffer loss. Some of that transition is suffering the loss of a friendship, a loss of money, a loss of a loved one, a loss of a job, and maybe even the loss of a dream. Is that we're now saying, the dream I used to have, I don't have no more. And the very thing that I thought I was going to be, that I'm not that now. The very job that I thought I was going to uh, retire from, I'm not retired from. The relationship that I thought I was going to be married to forever is no longer there. And now I got to transition, and I don't know what that looks like. And it's difficult because in this particular verse of scripture, we see something in the transition. We see God speaking to Joshua. And he says to Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead. I think it's interesting because in the middle of this, we realize that there's a thing with this saying that Moses, my servant, I realize that you might not think the very thing that died in your life was God's servant, but I want to tell you, it served a purpose. Oh, come on now. Uh, the very thing that you say in your life that there's no way that this could have been a servant of God because it hurt too much. It was more difficult than I have ever imagined, and there's no way it could have served God's purpose. And I want to encourage you this morning, it served God's purpose. Oh, uh, I agree. I'm not trying to say that you shouldn't mourn the loss or be hurt by its brokenness and what it did to you and your suffering around it. But I want to tell you, it's serving the purpose of God in your life. 
And yes, I realize in my Christian faith, there's a lot of misnomers. There's a lot of things talked about. And I, I know uh, for many of us, when we say yes to Jesus, that we think that things are going to always get better. That if I married and if I did it right and all the things that uh, people told me to do, shouldn't it have worked out? And I want to tell you, life is a mess. One of my models that me and my wife, and I try to encourage her with the same thing, that life is a beautiful mess. It's beautiful and messy all at the same time. I can tell you that I didn't think I'd be here right now because of the mess I've been through. Oh, some of you understand this by the very fact that you lost a loved one, a mother, a father, or someone that you thought close, and life didn't turn out the way you thought. You thought she was going to see you. You thought he would be there. You thought your father would finally show up in your life, and he didn't do it. But I want to tell you in this. It's interesting that in the middle of this very scripture that something happens in this, and that is this. You never hear Joshua praying. Joshua doesn't pray in this particular iteration because why? God heard him with his cry. See, I think some of us think that we need to pray a lot. And then we need to say a lot. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm not telling you not to pray. I'm throwing that out right now. Disclaimer. I was at church. They he told me I don't have to pray no more. I'm not saying that, but God is saying, I hear you even when you don't pray. I hear your cry. Listen, it was 30 days they had mourned Moses. They had mourned his life. They were lamenting his life. And I'm sure there was a spiritual groan going on in the inside of him. And I want to tell you, God hears the spiritual groans that are going on in the inside of you. Yeah, some of us come to church with the term, I have an unspoken request. You know how that go. That means I don't want nobody to know my business. It's unspoken. But I want to tell you, that God hears you, and he hears all the things that you don't say. He hears the things that you, you're crying out and you're groaning for, because sometimes there's no words for it. Oh, come on now. If you've been through some hard stuff, you don't even know how to pray sometimes, and God just wants you to moan a little bit. I have a funny thing when I think about it because our, our black churches often had done this and it was a part of their hymns, it was a part of their things that just, they just would just moan sometimes. Mm -hmm. And they would cry out for something deeper that their spirit couldn't even say. And sometimes we would go to the scriptures and say that the spirit is making groanings that cannot be uttered. I know... In the, mood, uh, in the show that I used to watch all the time, someone would be singing. And then at the end of good times, <laughs> not the first verse that she sings, and the first time she sings, but after the show is over, she's just going, mm, 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 mm. I can imagine what that means because that show was about tough stuff. I want to tell you, God hears your prayers. It's interesting that in the middle of these prayers, he's not just looking for your public persona. He's trying to get you to know your, uh, your, your, your private person. Not just your public stuff that people talk about, that they see you. Oh, yeah, I know you see me, and I know that I'm wearing this coat, and you guys might say this or that, but I want to tell you, God knows me deeper than you could ever know me. And what's crazy about that, as long as I've been with my wife for 38 years, he knows me even deeper. He knows the fears that I carry into the marriage. Oh, come on now. He knows the shame and guilt that I felt behind things that I've done or said. 
And I want to tell you right now, there's a groaning in you that you could do that, that's deeper than where you've been. If you want to go into 2020 and really see it and really own it, I want to tell you there's going to be a deeper groaning in your heart. God's going to do something deeper. It's just not going to be plastered on the wall and you say, uh, see it 2020. I want to tell you it's going to be a deeper 2020. If you want to see God's vision in you, it's going to take a lot deeper than where you are right now. Listen, it's, it's interesting that Jesus does the same thing in John 11. In John 11 and 40, pretty much when he meets up with uh, 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 the people and the, uh, they've been complaining about what happened with Lazarus, literally Jesus comes to the same inclination and he does the same thing. It says that he basically says this, don't tell, uh, uh, Jesus responds, didn't, tell, didn't I tell you that you would see the glory of God? If you believe, so they rolled the stone away. Then Jesus looks up into heaven and says, Father, thank you for hearing me. Had he said anything? He started off with, Father, I thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud uh, for the sake of all these people standing here. I want to tell you sometimes God was having a, a relationship with Jesus that God deeper than what he was speaking out loud. See, a lot of times we, 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 we get in these things and we begin to believe that I need to say this and I need to do this and I need to jot it down. And matter of fact, let me put it in, in my diary and put it all in this way. I want to say there's some things that you can't write down because you can't put language to it. But I think it's interesting in this whole thing that it's really about us trying to figure out, not only does it hear me, but here in the middle of this very verse of scripture, it basically says, quickly, if you go back to, uh, to Joshua 1, it basically says, your servant Moses is dead. He knew that. It wasn't a surprise to him. But what is interesting in the middle of this is that you can't, he, he basically is saying, you can't bring Moses back. Fix your eyes forward. What if I told you literally everything is working for your good? Oh, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying right now. It's a difficult thing to sometimes surmise that literally everything you've been through is working for your good. And you might say, well, no, 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 no. No, surely not. I want to tell you this. It might even be interesting to say this during this very crazy season around impeachment. What if I told you everything is working for your good? I know it's hard to stomach. Amen. 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 The Bible says count it all joy, right? Amen. And I know it's difficult to say, See it in, in, in a person, in a thing, in a, a place that we say, no, there should be more. I'm not trying to say that you can't call things out. I'm not trying to say we shouldn't speak truth to power, but at the same time, what is it trying to work out of you? See, some of us wouldn't be as active until we needed to be active about something. I ain't going to even lie. If it wasn't for Trayvon Martin, I don't think I'd be standing in this place right now. See, I was that typical evangelical preacher trying to do all the right things. Bless the Lord. He loves you with all your heart, soul, and mind. And I was doing all the perfect evangelical thought processes around the thing until Trayvon Martin happened. I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. And it wasn't that I hadn't noticed it. It wasn't that I had, hadn't noticed things that were different. I knew they treated me different because of the skin of my color. I live in this thing. Come on, there's no mistake, and I'm black. I don't mind saying that either. That felt good. <laughs> it felt good to say it in a place like the way. I love the way. <laughs> that we don't have to apologize for how God has made us. 
But it wasn't until Trayvon Martin's uh, uh, death and I was like, something's wrong. And I watched how other evangelicals was treating the situation. And I was like, something is wrong. My Moses. What I thought was the evangelical church, I had to let die. Oh, oh, yeah, I spent some time trying to resurrect it. Well, they don't really mean it that way. Come on now, listen. Come on, let's, let's forgive them, man. You know, let's, let's do all these things. And I realized that there was no place for it, and I had to say, I need to let it go if I need to move forward. See, some of us are still holding on to things that God is telling you, you need to let go if you, need, if you want to move forward. There's some things in your life that happened in your childhood, that happened in your adulthood, that you need to let go of so you can move forward. Matter of fact, I want to say this. It's healing in that. Oh, yeah. We could claim Jehovah Jireh. We could claim all those uh, beautiful things that he's Jehovah Rapha. But until you let him be that, some of us need to even... Some of us need to forgive God. Oh, you said, God, why'd you take my mama? Why did you take my son? And we just spoke some things out, and we might just say, God, I'm sorry for the things that came out of my mouth, and I blamed you. Why did you let this happen to me? And I said it out of my mouth. Why did you take my partner? Why did you take my friend? Why did you let this relationship? Didn't you hear me pray? I want to tell you sometimes there's a groan that you're going to have to do. And it's interesting in this. It says this, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, ah, it's beautiful when there's a, contingency there. there. Uh, I need to understand therefore because it's there for something. That in the middle of this therefore he says the time has come. I want to stop right there because many of us are stuck in time. Because we haven't dealt with the therefore. We're stuck in a time where we're still suffering the loss and we're thinking about all this stuff and God is trying to give us a vision for the future, but we're stuck in time. And I want to say to you today that God requires your time and that God wants to do something with the kairos moments in your life, uh, not the chronos. See, chronos is the Greek word for a chronological time, but the other Greek word is kairos. That means there's an appointed time. That God had an appointment like this. There was no tick, 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 but it was a time. I see you. See, sometimes Kairos moments are pivotal times in the middle of dark days when God is trying to line something up for your next movement. Uh, I want to say to you, it's pivotal sometimes because sometimes life is on a pivot. It's what you do with. I'm a basketball player, y'all, so I'm going to do my. It's usually my left foot, you know. <laughs> but life sometimes has a pivot. And we got to figure out how to deal with our pivots in life because Amen. guess what? The pivotal time might be right now. Amen. What are you going to pivot towards? What are you looking at? And how are you going to look at it? I want to tell you that time is just not just time. But if you think about Kairos as a theological time, it is a disruption in time. When the kingdom of God comes near us, and solicit a response. See, the thing is that God is telling us to do something, but it's not only just to do and listen, but to respond to it. Matter of fact, it's an invitation to respond. See, we, we often think all the good stuff, because I came up through the other stuff too, y'all. I came up through, if I, if I say it, then it's got to happen. And when it doesn't happen, I think something's wrong with me and I need to pray more. There's a lot of that beginning to think that if I did this, 
If I said this and we have this check mark, I said it earlier, you're not the author of your destiny. God is. And yes, I know God wants you to design and be discreet and think through and be all that, but ultimately, it's his life. What we're trying to say is, uh, I remember this song a long time ago that I used to sing in the Baptist church. It was, I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender almost. <laughs> and I realized that it, this time is about us figuring that out because when we surrender our time, when we surrender our kairos, it really is about trying to understand what our destiny is. Yeah, yeah. God, why, do you, why did you let that happen? Come on, has anybody ever thought that? If you, you ain't human if you didn't ever think that. And I was always taught you don't question God, right? You're, how many people grew up like that? Oh, come on, thank you, thank you. I wasn't alone. There was a whole lot of don't question, but then I started reading about David and I was like, wait a minute, hold on now. David was like, Father, God, why did you have me going through all this? I was like, David did it? Shoot, I'm, I'm going to do it. It's okay to ask God, what was the purpose of this? What's going on here? Not just from a need to know, but show me the way. I realize that there's things that, are, that have happened in my life that really is about changing my purpose and helping me get through my purpose, but I had to go through something. See, some of us really are thinking about that, that my vision really is about you, but your vision ain't about you, baby. I'm going to just tell you that. <laughs> what if I told you the vision that you're thinking about Thank God for the vision, but it ain't about you. See, somebody, some of us get excite, excited over vision, but it's really, you should be excited over the assignment. See, the thing is that we often get excited about the, uh, the, the vision of a thing, and we get all excited about how we're going to draw it up, but it's really about a call to an assignment. This right here was a call to an assignment. It's time. It's a call to assignment. It's a call to purpose. And purpose really requires that you have a proper perspective of you. Purpose requires that you have a proper perspective of who you are in the middle of this. I want to be honest with you. I realize that God has wired me in some weird ways. That, uh, that because of what happened in my life, because not only what happened in my life, but also what happened to my mama's life and my daddy's life and their father's life and their mother's life, it wind up wiring me for who I am right now. Some of you did that Pete Scazzaro uh, 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 deal with a mostly healthy spirituality. I wound up doing an inter uh, enneagram around that, and I, ri I re began to realize why my mama raised me the way. She did. There was some brokenness. And so I missed out on some things. I didn't get some things because my mom was trying to protect me from some things. I don't mind saying it respectfully. So I love my grandfather. He was a Baptist preacher, pastor. But man, he had a child out of wedlock. And I had to be the one to say, that ain't going to happen to me. See, sometimes there's some things that you need to understand about your history so you can stop it with you. Yeah. See, see, some of your parents are still dealing with shame and guilt from their parents, and now they transfer that shame and guilt to you, and now you go, if you're not careful, you'll pass on that shame and guilt to your own children. And so you need to say in your spirit, it stops with me because it's time. Mm, 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 mm. Yes, 
See, the thing about purpose is that it just doesn't deal with the beauty of who you are. It deals with the ugly of who you are, too. Oh, come on. The good showed up today. I'm preaching. Hallelujah. Feels good to be up here, but I'm glad y'all ain't been around with the ugly. Because I like that's good church right there. They talking back. But the hard parts in life that winds up happening in your life that you don't know why you responded the way you did when the clerk said this to you or when you got bumped into accidentally and then all of a sudden you go, hey. it's because something has happened in your life that made you react and respond the way you did. I ain't no therapist, but just check it out. There's some reasons why you do what you do. Some of you in here might need to break the, uh, the curse, if you will, of the things your parents told you and what others told you because it's time. Matter of fact, we need to declare the things in our life that, that have held us back. We need to declare that it is dead. Here's else what, what happens in the middle of this. And I want to be quick about this because I know we don't have a lot of time. But go to verse 6, if you will of Joshua 1. Here's where it says this. It says this. It says, be strong and courageous for you are the, are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors and I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Study the book of instructions. Continually meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. I want to say to you this. It's interesting that it's this whole terminology, if you read the first few verses, it's really talking about what God will do. I'm with you. Matter of fact, like I was with Moses, and now he's going to do this. And he's going to do that, but Jessica, check this out. Now it's your turn. You be strong. Amen. You be courageous. I want to say this again. Something is interesting about this because it really pivots on something here because it's really asking you to do something now. Now, matter of fact, it's not only telling you to do something, but it's actually telling you it's all. Oh, come on now. It's already present on the inside of you. Be strong. Be encouraged. Matter of fact, not only be strong and be encouraged, but don't be afraid or discouraged. That's the choice right there. You're going to have to choose to fight against fear. What they say, false evidence appearing real. Back in the day, it was forget everything and run. I'll just be real with you. But false evidence appearing real. I want to tell you some of the things that you've been through has been false evidence. I'm going to say that again. It's been declaring something over your life and the evidence doesn't fit you and you have been acquitted from that because guess what? That ain't you. Guess what? You're free. To not fear. Oh, I'm going to say that again because it's helpful to hear this in your hearing. You're free to not fear. Amen. Because I'm a black Baptist preacher sometimes. I have to say three times for emphasis. <laughs> You're free to not fear. And what it takes is for you is stepping into the right place. Number one, with this whole prayer, I, I, I love it because it, it, it really was God just saying, let me tell you something. 
he really let it out. He, he began to start telling him all the things that he, he could do. He began to give him insight on some things. He began to say, how it's going to happen just like I was with Moses. That's how I'm going to be with you. But God is telling Joshua in this message, I'm still with you. And it's interesting that Moses, uh, excuse me, that uh, Joshua is being told this on this side of the mouth. Amen. See, a lot of what we want God to do is tell us when we're already there. I got you. I got you, baby. You good. Go, matter of fact, keep going. But sometimes he tells you stuff on this side of the Jordan. It's interesting, in the King James Version, uh, those first few verses, it actually says that you'll cross over this Jordan as if there's other Jordans in your life. And I ain't talking shoes. <laughs> she liked that one. <laughs> the thing about I want to say to you is that there's other rivers you haven't crossed yet. Oh, I know you're 20, 30, 40. And for me, I'm 56. I'm still crossing rivers. And I need to be strong and very courageous. Because God is calling me to begin to move on this side when it's broke, when it's hurt, when I can't see my way, when it looks dark. And I want to tell you, God will use some of the dark stuff for your ministry. He'll use the broken pieces that you thought that he would never use. He'll use the broken pieces of what people told you. He'll use the broken people, uh, uh, broken things and how people used you. Even things on how they even abuse you. I want to tell you this right now. Amen, somebody. I tell you, God will use the things that you thought he would never use. Stop limiting God on what he'll use and what he won't. Stop saying he'll, he'll use this. This is a prettier gift to you, God. Won't you use this? Use this. Use my voice, God. Yes, use this. Use, use my talents, God. Use this. I want to tell you, God will ta sometimes take out the very thing that should have broke you and messed you up for life, and God will turn it around and make a gumbo out of it, and all of a sudden, everybody want to eat at that house. I figured somebody will want gumbo right now. See the thing. So, see the thing about it is uh, the reason why I use that that terminology around gumbo is because really it's the broken pieces of what's left over. Come on, come on. Yeah. I got a little of this, and I got a little of that. I got a piece of this, and I got a piece of that. And we'll use some flour to make a roux. Oh yeah, I know how to make it. And you'll be surprised what God will use with flour and water. And have it taste oh so good. But I want to tell you, you might think all I got is flour. Do you see the, 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 the strands of it? Because flour, when you sift it, it almost feels like nothing. If you blow it, it'll just blow in the wind. I want to tell you, the very thing that you think is nothing. The very thing that you said, it has no substance in it. But I tell you, God will say this to you. You shall be like a tree planted by the river of water that brings forth its fruit in its season and your leaf won't wither and whatsoever you do will prosper. Amen. Because he's adding water. Isn't that what the Holy Spirit is? Come on now. See, you think it's just broken. You think it's just not enough. But I want to tell you, it's more than enough. I want to tell you that once again. It's more than enough. Amen. Here in this time, God does this very clearly. And he uses this situation. And he says, you know what? Not only be strong and be courageous, but he uses the term be for a reason. It's not, it, it's, it's like a declaration. It's almost a declaration when you don't want people to mess with you no more. Just leave me be. Yeah. It sounds like some broken English, don't it? Yeah. Yeah. Just leave me 
B. Because the B is about your identity and God says, let me use everything that you are. And let me, let me put it this way. I, I've said this before because my auntie was interested enough to where she used to say these things to me that I used to be like, wow, that's deep. You know, but I don't think she know how deep that is. But she said this. She said, I, I, I said, auntie, how you doing? She says, Kirk, I'm doing well. I'm, I'm drinking from my saucer. She said, I'm drinking from my saucer. Meaning back in the day, she had a, a, a tea thing, and she used to put the, the teacup right on the saucer. And it means that the God has been overflowing. Instead of drinking from the cup, she's drinking from her saucer. I want to tell you all the things that have happened in your life. It's for the overflow to happen. Amen. See, brokenness yeah. comes from overflow. Amen. Because what it does, it breaks you of you and allows God to do something that he couldn't do because you was in the way. Amen. And now God wants to use those very things to overflow in your life so you can drink from it. Right. Listen, it's all important here. God wants you to uh, uh, come from this river, to stop doing the things that you were doing, to really listen and know that God, he hears you, but also to know this very thing. God is ready for not only for you to just have an encounter with him, but that you can now choose how you cross your Jordan. What I mean is all of us got rivers. All of us got stuff to climb over. Matter of fact, there's some stuff in 2020 that you don't know is coming. And you're going to be pleading the blood of Jesus all over it. But God might be designing that thing to make you the man, the woman, the child of God that he wants you to do and become. And I'm saying this in this way. It's not that there's rivers is that you have a choice on how you're going to cross that river. I'll say that again. It, it's not that you're not going to have rivers. God is saying, how are you going to cross this next one? Are you going to know that I'm with you? Are you going to realize the things in your life is dead and you could keep moving? You could keep on doing what God has called you to do and know that I'm with you. Just like I was with Moses, just like I was with everyone else, I'm going to be with you. The gift, the talent, and all the things that it is in that situation. Thank you, Lord. I'm sorry. That's cute. And I, because I've heard Kids say other things than that. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. Amen. Let's close our eyes. Amen. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for the opportunity. First of all, we got a chance to just dance before you, God. And we got a chance to let go. We released some endorphins, God. We were able to celebrate. I think too often we come to church not to participate but be a, a, a person that stands and sits on the bench or sits in the seat to just watch. But Father, I thank you that there's some things in people's lives today that you want to deal with. And Father, I believe that there's some things that people have been quiet about. And they need to begin to speak out those things because there's healing in it. That is not just an unspoken request. It's really a request that is being made known because God, I'm going to speak this out in front of folks so I can be free. Father, I realize that our words, yes, they do carry power. And the things that we say 
are important. Father, we are giving sermons by the things where we really believe about ourselves. That we're not enough. That I feel shame and guilt. That there are days when I'm not in the right place. And I put myself under condemnation because I didn't live up to what my mama thought I should be. Or I didn't live up to the things that people thought I would do or be. And I'm trying to make too many people happy. That I put on faces for everybody else. But I don't know who I am anymore. Oh, people know me from Instagram and Facebook. But they don't know me. Father, today, I pray that the men and women of God under the sound of my voice will learn how to just be so you could speak into their life how you wired them, how you made them. Because once they learn how to be, they can be strong. As one psalmist declares, I'm stronger, and I'm wiser, and I'm better. And you didn't bring me into transition just to change me. You brought me into transition to change me and make me better. No, I, I still got things in my life that I'm working on, but I'm better. So God, I pray that those who heard the word today will learn how to listen to you, oh God, confine in you, to learn how to confine in community, because just maybe their attempt of God telling them it's their time but maybe it's time for them to tell others it's their time that they learn to stand in the gap for someone else God has raised them up to do a greater work Father I pray that this vision see it 2020 is about them moving over this Jordan. We thank you now. We give you praise. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name. Amen and thank God.